Hey, Steve here from Post Processing Mastery. Now, I'm about to show you in this natural HDR Photoshop tutorial how to blend layers when things are moving in between your bracketed exposures. Now, if you like the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to keep the Photoshop tutorials coming. And if you have an idea for an upcoming tutorial, then just let me know in the comments. Now, in this episode of Processing Subscriber Images, we start with four bracketed exposures and then I'm going to show you the luminosity masking techniques along with a little trick that's only been available in my paid videos until now that is essential when blending a tree that's blowing in the wind and so is moving in between each of your bracketed images. So many thanks to Ted Lynch who sent this beautiful set of raw files in for me to work on in this demonstration. Now with that said, let's get on with the tutorial. So this image has been sent in to me by Ted Lynch. Um, I say this image, it's actually a set of four exposures. So I'll just show you each one in, uh, in their respective layers. Uh, we've got this bright exposure and then a slightly darker, slightly darker and darkest. So uh, yeah, Ted sent these in to me uh, because he was having problems blending the exposures in given the movement of the tree here, which is blowing in the wind. Um, so if I just uh, hide these layers one by one, you can see there between the frames is actually moving quite significantly. Uh, so I have had a quick little uh, little go with this image before I hit record uh, because I think the tree isn't the only issue um, with regards to uh, the scene kind of moving in between frames. So what I'll do just to show you what I mean is um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. So keep your eye on this shape here in the middle and then on the horizon line up here. So this bright exposure, when I reduce the opacity, we're going to bring through the slightly darker exposure beneath. And so what I'm looking for is any shift in the movement uh, between those lines there. Um, so apart from the tree, everything else between these two frames seems to be um, lining up okay but um, so this is this is the first way I would check for this um, however I still think there is a little bit of movement so I'm going to add a layer mask here just with a black brush I'm just going to brush over some of these edges to see how it lines up and as I brush through here you can kind of see the edges change a little bit so let me just do that again especially on this shape in the middle so as I brush around the edge here you're going to see as well as it becoming darker it's slightly shifting and slightly moving so what that means basically is that the camera was moving in between the frames uh, you know in between each exposure um, so let me just delete that mask there so we know that there's movement between the top two exposures let's do the same thing between um, the second and third exposure. So again, just reducing the opacity. Now to me here, looking at this on a large screen, I can see there is very little, if any, movement in what should be stationary object here. So again, just to confirm that, let me zoom in and let's take this object here in the middle again as another example. I'll add a layer mask. and. If I brush here, we can see it's getting darker, but it's not moving at all. So that's good. We know layer two and three are pretty much lined up perfectly, apart from that tree that's just moving naturally in the uh, in the wind. And what I've just noticed also actually is a bit of cloud here. Um, so if you look at this bright, whoops, <laughs> um, if you look at this bright part of the cloud up here. If I just mask in over that, we'll see that bright area kind of shifts a little bit. Or at least I thought it did, maybe. Yeah, no, I think it is moving. So if we look here, this particular section, which has got that bright, um, yeah, it's got like a bright circle around a darker little bit there. If I just brush that in over here, we can see it's kind of moved. So yeah, what that tells me is that there's been a bit of time in between these two exposures. Um, so with the wind blowing strong enough to actually blow the tree around quite a lot, 
I imagine there's not actually that much time, but it's just that the clouds have blown over a little bit. So it's going to be something we have to look out for in a moment when we do blend these. Um, but otherwise, all the stationary stuff is pretty well lined up. So let's do one final check between layers two and one. So reducing the opacity of this layer here just to see if there's any movement. It's pretty hard to tell. So again, let's have a look at this object over here and add a layer mask. Now that is, yeah, I can see, it might be hard to pick up on the video, but I can see the edge of that is just moving when I brush that in. Maybe the horizon up here will be a better indicator. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, as I brush this layer through, we can see that um, the top of the distant hills there is kind of shifting up. So that means that the um, the darker layer is actually higher than this, uh, this second layer. So I think that might be okay um, because we can probably get away with processing this without using this darkest exposure. Um, the only thing I think it really brings to the table is the fact that that's like the really nice defined sun over there on the horizon and um, we can see here the sun has actually moved a bit in between these exposures <clears throat> um, so I won't throw this away I'll keep it and maybe we'll use that in a bit um, but for now knowing that these two middle layers are pretty well lined up um, but this top one isn't what I'm just going to do is try and use Photoshop's auto align to bring that top one into play um, so that it so that it lines up with the other two. Um, now the reason I'm not including the bottom one is because I did try this a moment ago, like I said, before I hit record. And for some reason it doesn't really work when I add that darker exposure in. So that kind of seems to throw Photoshop off. Um, so yeah, I'm just, sorry, that was a bit quick. Um, so if I go to edit in the menu and then auto align layers, and I've got these three layers selected. I'm just going to choose the auto and then hit OK. When that finishes doing its business, we should see a slight shift there. And now if I zoom in on these uh, on this shape again in the middle, we can see that's pretty perfectly lined up between all three layers now. So given that, um, I'll probably just crop off the edges slightly because when we use that auto align um, it does rotate the image a little bit and give us cause to, uh, to actually chop some edges off because otherwise they'll just be weird transparent edges. Um, so there we go. Probably took a bit more off than I needed to then but never mind uh, for now. So one other thing that Ted mentioned when uh, he sent these in to me was that he wanted to go for a low key approach to the processing, um, which you know I took to mean the sort of the darker end of the scale. So I think it makes sense to start off using the dark exposure as the basis, and then we'll blend in the brighter parts as we need them. So the issue with the um, you know with the tree moving, what I'm going to have to do is create a duplicate of this actually let me rename these so dark uh, this medium and light okay so what I'm going to have to do is because it's going to be impossible to blend these exposures in around that tree um, using any kind of layer masking and uh, just because that movement literally makes it impossible so we're going to have to be a bit clever and what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer, the dark layer, and I'm going to try and increase its exposure so that it's the same brightness level as, um, as the medium layer. So I'm not sure exactly how much that's going to have to go up by, but let me just turn this into a smart filter, so dark copy. And when that's done, let's 
taking its sweet time. Um, so now that's done. Actually, I wanted to do that after. Um, let's remove the layer mask first. Okay, filter, convert for smart filters. Now I'm going to guess that it's about a stop brighter. Um, so let's go into the camera raw filter and increase by about one stop. Click OK. Now let's see how that compares to the brightness of this medium layer. It's pretty similar, probably just a touch under. So let me just double click on the camera raw filter again and just push that up a little bit more, maybe 1.2. Okay. Okay, still a little bit brighter, I think. So, not much. Um, let's go one and a third, roughly. And that looks about as close as we can get it. So, what we can now do is use the original medium layer for blending everything um, that's not the tree. And then we can blend the tree in using this dark copy layer only. So let's um, just add a layer mask back on this dark copy layer. Think about what we want to actually start blending in. So. Let me invert the mask to hide it. And I'll just take um, a black brush, uh, sorry, a white brush, so X on the keyboard. Um, all right, let me see if I can just blend the tree in um, using a luminosity selection. So I need to turn the previews on on my luminosity masking panel. Um, yeah, as with all these processing subscriber image videos, um, I'll be using the panel to shortcut a lot of the luminosity masking process. Um, you know, if you, you know, everything I'm doing here is possible using regular luminosity masking techniques. It just takes a lot longer to demonstrate uh, using the channels panel, and I also have a course on how to actually learn luminosity masking from scratch. Um, so, yeah, I think. For these videos, uh, just to repeat, um, I'll be using the panel just to speed everything up and make it all uh, make it all quicker and easier to follow. Um, so essentially, what I'm doing, I'm turning on the previews so that when I hit um, one of these buttons here to create a selection based on the luminosity, that I can actually see the selection before I start to use it. So I'm going to hit five on this bar here, which uh, on the left, which is going to load a uh, shadow selection hopefully, and yes, it's <laughs> not too bad. Um, now, this preview is showing the tree in white, so we're isolating the tree, but we've got some grays in the background as well. So I might just hit this levels button here in the panel to modify this uh, selection even further than what these buttons here can do. Uh, so what I want to do is try and make the, the tree a bit brighter. I'm just going to reduce the brightness of those sort of grays behind the tree as much as I can without diminishing the tree selection. So I think that's probably going to do us around there. We're still going to be, you know, if I'm blending in around here, it's still going to get some of that um, sky, uh, some of that land behind the tree, but let's go with this. So I'm going to click use mask. Now that loads this mask as a selection. Um, Command H or Control H to hide the selection. And with a white brush on, I usually go around 30% opacity. I'm just going to start brushing in here into the tree to hopefully brighten it up without brightening the sky behind. That seems to be doing a pretty good job. Now, willing to bring a bit of the uh, brighter exposure through in the background there. Uh, but I don't want to do too much on this particular layer. Um, 
because this again remember is just for the tree only now if I just uh, toggle this layer off and on we can see the effect that this layer has had and you know we've brightened up that tree quite nicely and given that we're going to go for a dark approach to the finished image that's probably as far as we need to go in terms of brightness so um, yeah let's now activate this original medium layer I'm just going to invert whoops uh, undo <laughs> I'm going to deselect my selection so command or control D and I'm going to invert this layer mask here uh, to hide the medium layer and now I can just take a large white brush and I'm just going to kind of brush around the image to brush some of this brightness in um, yeah, no, no luminosity selections for this um, this is just a purely sort of um, freehand some pre purely freehand masking here just to brighten things up a little bit probably use a little bit down here in the corner as well but I might use the dark copy layer to do that because we might encroach over into the tree a little bit and just brightening it up in general a little bit so I'm just going over what I was doing before just a touch so uh, now with these two layers uh, let's deselect them and see the difference that the combination of these two has made and that's it's pretty decent I think um, so we're kind of getting towards an even exposure we haven't really got too many underexposed shadows um, I think if I zoom right in we can see here even though these shadows in the tree are really dark they're not underexposed in any way so that's okay the only thing is in here in the um, in this thing here uh, we probably need to brighten those shadows up just a little bit um, so yeah let's do that now so deselect my selection which just in case I always that's a bit of a habit just to press command or control D anytime I move on to do something new um, so yeah okay let's again invert the layer mask of the light layer now let's grab a selection that's gonna isolate the shadows as much as possible um, yeah this time again I'm going to modify it with a levels adjustment just so that I can pick out the darkest bits inside this thing okay that'll do use mask command or control H to hide and I'm just gonna brush in here to lighten this up and just for good measure let's bring some of this through around it Now I have to be careful in the grass here because if I blend too much, actually I think it already might be too much, I'm just going to undo what I've done here in the grass and um, because the grass is moving as well, I need to be really careful um, about the movement uh, when I'm blending the layers in. So yeah, I'm just removing this adjustment from the foreground. Okay, and now let's just come back and have a look at this dark layer to see if there's anything we can do because these colors are really nice um, I'm not sure what we can do really about this apart from maybe to sort of try and get that darkness that really sort of deep rich um, color back into the sky and the uh, and the foreground as well uh, maybe at this point now I'm going to do something I normally recommend against, uh, which is to create um, a layer that is going to create like a like a save point, like a stop stopping point for our non-destructive workflow. I'm going to select all, going to copy merged, and then I'm going to paste that merged layer and create a new background. Um, and then from this I can again convert for smart filters
and when that's finished doing what it does I'm going to use the camera raw filter to decrease the exposure to somewhere around what that, uh, that original dark layer was um, and then we can use this to kind of bring that dark effect back through um, so given that let's add a layer mask and yeah I think because this is going to be pretty sort of creative edit um, let's just use a, a white brush and just just brush around here just to sort of basically freehand uh, where we want to be dark and where we want to be bright so just brushing through the middle there just to accentuate the sunlight um, so really this is kind of a vignetting effect I guess you could say let's bring that sky back in a bit more maybe around here yeah this will be a bit of trial and error just to see what looks good um, yeah I'm not so sure about this uh, let's just reduce the opacity that's, do you know what I'm gonna scrap this idea so this could be one way of going um, you know so it's always an approach worth taking just to create that new layer um, to kind of replicate this original dark background layer and um, because you know we can't blend that layer back in to our shot uh, because of all the movement um, let me scrap this another approach to get that kind of dark deep look and feel that I think uh, we're going for uh, could be just to use um, well let's try an autumn effect I think this image will lend itself quite nicely to this kind of effect so I've got the button there to shortcut the process of creating an autumn effect layer um, all right let's invert layer mask okay that's <laughs> that's quite a glow um, let's reduce the opacity again yeah I think that might be a bit heavy-handed but again that's something you can try I think it looks quite nice actually I mean I'm not I don't really mind that the the tree is um, pretty dark now uh, another thing you can do actually let me just start this process again if um, yeah, if we want to create an autumn effect layer that is applied only to the midtones and highlights, so that we don't get that real darkening of the tree happening, <clears throat> we can actually use the panel um, to create a selection before we run that autumn effect. So I'll just hit a one on the panel on the highlights end here, and that preview looks pretty good. So we're looking for in this uh, scenario, we're looking for um, everything that we don't want the autumn effect to apply to to be black so basically the tree in this case so let's hit use mask now and then hit the autumn button and that should load that selection directly into the layer mask of the autumn effect layer that it's now creating so yeah that's much more of a subtle effect and I think that works a lot better Um, and now from here I won't continue on through the rest of my workflow I think the video is already getting a little bit on the long side and um, the main thing here I really wanted to kind of demonstrate was how to handle blending these exposures when um, there was so much movement in the tree and also some slight movement in the camera um, you know, between e each exposure being taken so yeah hopefully you found this video useful um, and yeah, hopefully it will help you with those tricky blending jobs and tasks in Photoshop when you come home and you've got a whole bunch of uh, bracketed exposures that just happen to have a bit of movement in them um, for one reason or another. So yeah, like I said at the top of this video, if you like this video, remember to hit the like button, yeah, give it a thumbs up just to let me know. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, then again, just uh, just leave them in the comments section on YouTube just below the video. And for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.